right, Wheel? Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Another episode of Red Wine and Chaos. I'm Ashley. That's Lar over there on the other side. On the other side of the interwebs. <laughs> The interwebs. I like it. I haven't figured out this like camera thing yet. I'm trying to use the mic and be all like official. Yeah. Cause for whatever reason, I can't. When we do these like virtual, I can't hear myself from my AirPods or from like headphones. Or, yeah. Or like any kind of. So I'm trying to use the mic. Um, but I don't know if I'm talking into it. I, I also feel like it's like in the way there's like this big blob. What if I took that down? Maybe that'll be better for me. I thought maybe you would do it because it's a sense of security, you know, because we usually, usually are sitting there and we're a little bit out of the norm. Might be that way for the next oh, maybe. few weeks. Maybe. I didn't even think about that, but that's all right. Yeah. We adapt, we adjust, we move and we figure it out. <sighs> Tis life his life because we've put out 52 episodes right as of today as this would be 53 as of today i think this will be i think this i'm looking right now 52 52 52 the one you guys are listening to now will be our 53rd episode that's wow that's a lot that's Holy a lot moly. of talking that's a it's lot a of that's, that's a lot of like that's a lot of free therapy sessions. <laughs> Maybe for you guys too. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I will say it was wild. So I gotta tell you this. So like when we we got together this weekend, we did a girls' day. It was so much fun. Oh, I had so much fun. We got to go. Um our friend Alexis opened up her own salon. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, it's called Prestige Salon. It's uh, for those of you who are local to our area. It's in Portage off of Westnage. And we highly uh, suggest and recommend that you um, head over there. And uh, yeah. if you uh, I, now I know how I know how the hair, the hair, the, the hair game works, because you'd be feeling like almost like a relationship. Like, man, if you if you go with somebody else, you're cheating on your stylist. If you got a good stylist. And like I had, I had one too. My previous stylist was wonderful. Shout out to her. Katie was a wonderful stylist. She just moved. She moved to a new salon and I never reconnected with her. And I happened to be shopping for new hair, if you will. You know how you're like, <laughs> yeah. not like I have my own real hair, but you know, yeah. like I needed a, I needed a fresh do. I needed some yeah. color change, you know, and I, I do be changing my stuff from time to time, especially with the seasons. And so I was just like on Facebook one day and I saw pictures that she had posted that I somehow scrolled upon um, of some color work that she had done. And it was fabulous. And I was like, well, you know, let me just reach out to this to this girl and see what she's you know, this woman and see what she's got going on and if she's taking new clients. And so I went and, and just instantly connected with her on a professional level and also on a personal level. Like she's a great she's a great human. Yeah, I agree. Let's do um a girl's day and go and check out her salon. And then we um, got to, we went shopping at some fun little shops right there in that same plaza. Yeah. That one boutique was fantastic. I can't wait to go back. <laughs> I know. I have my shirt that's on. A, I think oh, it looks, that's a good color on you. Thanks. Um, I tried mine on because we all three of us got the same shirt just in, in case anybody colors. was wondering. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, I tried mine on and John was like, oh, that's nice. And I was like, I know. <laughs> I like it a lot. It looks real good on. So I can't wait to hear what Sarah thinks about hers. I rocked mine with, um, and I have a similar outfit on today. I don't have the, but I had those leather leggings that I had on. Mm, yeah. And this, and then I got this really cute, well, you can see her here, this leather jacket for Christmas <gasps> from oh. Tim. And then he got me like some black, um, like remember those boots I was talking to you about? They're like Combat, but not really, not not and not the thick wedges are yeah. like a normal. And so the outfit together was dope. It just flowed nicely. It's just a good, great, great look. Um, but anyway, so we did that, and then we went to and got some drinks at, at one of the local watering holes next door to her salon, which it just all lined up perfectly. It did. And, and Ashley, we're sitting there. We we haven't been at the bar for very long. And this woman walks up to Ashley, who she obviously knew her because she hugged her and. 
was friends with her and she was like oh my gosh and she was like uh, you like introduced us or whatever and she was like oh you're laura and she and then she was like i listen to you guys all the time like, and then she was like i downloaded all of your episodes before i went on vacation and yeah I was like, and I was like, awesome i know i was like oh my gosh we, there's like real listeners out here and, and, and all joking aside there are um our numbers have been looking nice lately so we appreciate all of you absolutely it's a long long way to get around to the fact to say thank you but thank you for <laughs> thank you for sticking with us it wouldn't be us if it didn't take us a long time to come around no i've always um, been told my stories get a little lengthy we like to talk that's why we have a podcast it runs in my family too it does but <laughs> they take much longer to get to the point than I do, and they talk slower. I talk land, faster. Land so the plane, Matt and Andy. Land the plane. <laughs> land the plane. <laughs> well, it's usually because there's alcohol involved. You know, that always <laughs> lengthens the story, especially for Andy. For that yeah. That's just like that without alcohol. I know. He talks like my mother. Sorry, Kelly, you guys talk Love slow. You. Love you. Um, Ooh, so alcohol. I was going to say, what are you drinking? Uh, something strong. Yeah, girl. Um, and speaking of Andy, um, Andy gifted um, me a bottle of booze for Christmas. Nice. I don't even know if he gifted it to me. He walks up to me. He's like, here, this is for Tim. And I'm like, tuh. He don't drink. I what do, if, though. Not like that. Like, I'll share <laughs> it with him. <laughs> like, So anyways, he got me a Deep Eddie's mm. vodka. He got me the Ruby Red Grapefruit one. Have you had that one? Yeah, I have. Okay. It's good. So it's Deep Eddie's Ruby Red Grapefruit. Um, a splash of Kettle One, the peach and orange blossom. Oh, vodka. yum. So yeah. That. Um, strawberry lemonade and just a splash of orange juice. Just uh, for color? Just for the color. Just to add a little to my citrus because I, I needed a little bit of bright light in my life today. I needed to taste so, my alcohol. I'm going to pretend that I am on a beach somewhere <laughs> and that, um, you know, this bright light is with me. Um, this is a, a three clinks. Okay. Yeah. Because nice. I made it strong and it's delicious. I um, it sounds really good, by the way. Mm. Um, I recycle the wine again tonight. I feel like every time we do these virtual, I I recycle well, a wine. You're such a little lovey that you don't want to <laughs> open anything without me. That's new, and you know, and then you're gonna be like, "This is a really great wine," and I'm gonna be like, "Ah, I don't have it." I can't taste it through the screen. So I recycled the Fortissimo, the this one that has the deer on the front. Oh, that you know what? That was a good one, though. It was a good one. Yeah. Um, it is better the second time around. Really? Yeah. Remind me what type of wine that is. Uh the blend? Yes. It is a the Toriga Nationale, Syrah, Petit Verdot, and the Alicante Bouchette. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to hear you say it. <laughs> You did you did well though. Thank you. I can barely see it. I mean, did you see me squinting? <laughs> um. So you know, second time around, I'm giving it a, a three stars. I don't know what we gave it the first time, but it, three cheers for me. For three cheers. One. All right, mm -hmm. it's a good it's one. It's been a while. It's been, it's a, been while. a while. I heard you had a shit bottle last week, so you were due for a. Yeah, and I was um. It wasn't shit. No. I sent it. That wasn't nice. No, it was. It was. Oh, okay. I um sorry, Dad, if you're listening, but it was not great. It I was trying to be I was trying to be kind. Um it was it's the festivist. If I'm airing grievances, it's about that wine. Um yeah. it wasn't good. Yeah. Um yeah. in fact, it was still sitting up here <laughs> when from you when John <laughs> from when John and I recorded. It was still just sitting up here on our little table, just <laughs> Well, I will say, I think I brought it back. So I we have a bottle that I was gifted from one of my mom's friends that we're supposed mm -hmm. to review on the show. Um, and I think it's in my car. Okay. Well, next time it's you... It's a Merlot, which is why it hasn't made its way out of the car. <laughs> well, it can't be any better than that mystery red Festivus wine. Or it can't be any worse. <laughs> we don't discriminate. Yes, we do. <laughs> If it's a fucking Merlot. <laughs> just a little. Just a, just a little. Sorry, Marge, if you're listening, I apologize. <laughs> Kathy didn't tell you we don't like Merlot. She wouldn't know. She wouldn't know. She wouldn't reply. She wouldn't know. She wouldn't know. No. Okay. Well, two, three cheers. That's great. Good. So it's like two, six cheers. It's like six cheers today because it's too ooh. different. Mm. I need all the cheers I can get. We're on a roll. Cheers. So it's been a... um. It's been an interesting couple it's been weeks. It's a shit show. 
Okay. <laughs> It's been a goddamn shit show. It's been a shit show. Um, 2022 has been a dumpster fire shit show. It's not starting off promising. Ah! It's not. um, I saw a meme or a TikTok or something the other day that was like, um, 2022 feels like you're in that, like, you're taking the same guy back for the third time. Oh, for fuck's sake. (laughs) Right? And and I was like, yes, that is. (laughs) That's yes, it's, it's a it's a three peat of COVID, and I don't like it. I don't, oh, man. I don't like it. It's been oh. a so they um, Oliver School um, took away their mask mandate. Yeah. Yep. You, okay. So you told me that before yep. before Omicron, right? But God, or is it still gone? It's still gone. Um, oh no. What do the COVID cases look like in there right now? Rampant. Gotta Rampant. Be. They Gotta sent be. out an email yesterday. Put your masks back. Th- yes. Or Monday night that was like, we're not going to enforce it. We, we highly, highly encourage suggest it. it and we highly encourage it. We're not going to enforce it. Um, however, if we can't get this shit under control, we're going back virtual. Oh, shit. And it, shit. it was less <laughs> of a threat and more of a promise type of email oh, is, is no. the way I took that. So I'm just preparing myself. And we went at work back to working from home for the next 30 days because of all of the cases. And oh. I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I will the, break. That was the whole reason why this podcast yeah. got started in the first fucking place was because I was trying to work from home, teach from home, and I, I wanted to put pencils in my eyes. I wanted to take all of the pencils that Oliver brought home from school and put them in my eyes. And now we're going back. So maybe there'll be more poop wall stories. Who knows? Oh, my God. No, there can't be. It's not possible. It's not even a fucking option. Like I didn't I think it was possible the first time, but here we are. Oh, I won't. I'll break down. Twice. I won't break down. <laughs> I can't do it. I cannot. So, aside from that, job. I cannot do my job right now and teach at the same time. I can't. Do he it. can come to my house. I'll take Levar. <laughs> I'll take Levar. Fucking lose it. Um, aside from the fact that they might go back virtual again, the transition for Oliver to come off of break and go back to school is always a tough one. Right. Um, right. and this year was absolutely no exception. It has been, um, it's. <laughs> it's been rough getting him up in the morning and getting him moving. And like, I'm just like consistently seven minutes late for work every day. Girl, I promise you this. I will tell you this. And I I mentioned it briefly when we, before we started recording, like everybody is moving in slow motion right now. And I mean that wholeheartedly. Like, I agree. I, I am in a constant state of like anxiousness and panic with my job right now. Because everybody is moving in slow motion because there's so much unknown and there's so much like disarray and there's so many people that are ill and it's just, it's insane. It is insane. It's unreal. Like to think that two years later, we're going to be in a worse off position right now than we were when it started. Yeah. 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 And I, you know, it's just like, I was sick last week, like just didn't feel super great. And it wasn't, I took all the tests and it wasn't Mm -hmm. COVID. Couldn't get in for a PCR test. So didn't make sense. By the time I could get in, I started to feel better. So it Mm -hmm. didn't make any sense to go get one. Um, But tell me, I brought you over. I mean, I don't have PCR tests, but I got a gang of rapids. You could have just continued to. Yeah. Stick I've them. been working from home, so it's not. Oh, um, yeah, it didn't matter. No, it didn't matter. But well, it's um, crazy though, because now you can't even like. My dad texts me this morning. He's like, "I have a headache um, on the right side of my head. I've had it for two days. What did your headaches feel like?" I'm like debilitating, and I'm like, "Have you been anywhere? Have you been around anybody?" He's like, "No," and I'm like, "We should be good." Yeah. Um, if you haven't gone anywhere, if you literally haven't been anywhere, and you haven't been around anybody, you should be good. My brother has it right now, though. But that's the first thing you think of, right? When you're not feeling well, is it's Mm -hmm. like, well, I fucking COVID. Yeah, my colleague, she's she's been out the last three days because she had 
cold and flu like symptoms and she's negative she found out today she's negative but she's had to work from home and then today there was another one i don't know um i'm sitting in my office and i'm like working and i just hear somebody hocking up their lungs like it was like <laughs> a terrible cough i <laughs> messaged one of my colleagues and i was like who is that and he was like it's not so-and-so. They're in the office with me. So it must be this person, this person. I'm like, well, it's not this person because she was in the office with me. So it is only one person that it could be. And I'm like, man, I'm about to tell her to take her ass home. Well, yeah, because you just, you, you don't, don't know. know. You can't find tests anywhere. You can't, like, I've even seen that people are saying that if if you have the Omicron variant, not to swab your nose, but to swab your throat. Really? Yeah, because it lives that the sore lives throat there. with the Omicron, that's where the virus is well, living. I must not, I didn't have the new one. I couldn't have because I didn't have a sore throat. Yeah. And, and I lost, lost your, taste yep. and smell. That that must have been, I must have had Delta still. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll tell you, on the way home from uh, work yesterday, you know, Optimed is down here. Um, they do the rapid testing in the drive through window down there mm -hmm. at 6 p.m. That thing was wrapped around the building. I bet. The line was wrapped around the building. I bet. You can't get it. You can't. It's wild. It's wild out there. I it told you wild. I texted you the other day from Walgreens, and I was like, I got to get out of here. It's a fucking mess in here. Yeah. It's insane. It's, um, so I would hate that. <laughs> If he finally adjusted back to normal, then all of a sudden that you had to go virtual. I'd be pissed. I mean, the fact that they're even talking about that is not a good it's, sign. It's going to happen. It's going to happen because we live, the, the small little town we live in is very conservative. Conservative. And they all and, went, no masks. Nobody, Yay! Yeah, nobody wants to wear the masks. And Oliver, like, he has to take his because they still have to wear it on the bus. And he takes the bus home three days a week. So I make him bring it to school every day. And we talked about it. Like if you're not feeling well, or if somebody's not feeling well around you, like you have to put that mask on. And he agrees with that, but nobody else is wearing a mask. So trying to not even and the it, teachers. And so like to try to get him to wear a mask when nobody else is wearing real? a mask. Yeah. Even yeah. the teachers aren't. Mm hmm. Oh, child. That's wild right now. So I just feel like that's just. It's wild. It's just it's the most highly contagious variant that we I know. Had. I know. It's just it's crazy out there. Like it's it crazy out there. I can't. Yeah. So I can't get him to wear a mask. I can't get him up in the morning. I can't get him out the door in enough time. I can't. I can't yeah. get the kid to do anything right now. That that adjustment period going back is always a beast. Like we we're we're we we're, we're struggling with the same thing essentially. Like just you know like the timeliness and part of that's on me. Um, sure. You know I'm working late and I don't want to get up in the morning. Yeah. So I'm I'm literally I snooze probably five times and then I'm rushing to get up and then I'm rushing to yeah. get him up and then we're rushing to get out the door and I feel so bad like. This time of year is always hectic for me, but it's like worse right now than it normally is. And um, this kid has wanted nothing but for me to pack him a lunch um, <laughs> because we had, <laughs> I know that sounds odd. We coming back from Georgia, we stopped at B-dubs and we had dinner and he got a chicken wrap instead of normally gets like a cheese where he got a chicken wrap and he loved it. And so he's like stuck on these chicken wraps. So I oh. bought like, I bought like some of those spinach wraps and so I made yeah. it fairly healthy and like we had them for dinner one night and he's kept asking me, mom, if we do chicken wraps, can you, or can you, can you do a home lunch today? Can you do a home lunch today? And like, I'm working late and then I'm rushing to get up in the morning and it's like, I don't have time to get it done. And I just saw the look of disappointment on his face. What was it the night before last? And I was like, or the, no, yesterday morning. And he was like, can I do a, and I was like, I'm late, buddy. I'm not going to be able to get to it. And he was like, oh, okay. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to teach you how to do it. I was going to say, you should teach it. him how to do it. So I did uh, last night and, you know, easy peasy got it done. And he come home today and he was like, my lunch was really good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man, if that's what it takes to make you happy, you easy. Yeah. <laughs> well, we finally got it done. But yeah, I feel you. So, you know, 
we threw around some discussion ideas about topics today and we didn't really land anywhere. So we decided to do a chaos potpourri because I feel like that is like, I don't know. I feel like my life is chaos potpourri right now. Same. Yeah. Same. Like wildly chaotic, more so than normal. And Mm -hmm. um, I want to tell you what I did do yesterday. So LeVar started wrestling. Um, this, and this kind of ties into one things I want to talk about. The Wire started wrestling yesterday, and they got a new um, uh, location. So they're yeah. over there in the building next to the old D&W there, mm-hmm. off of Romance. So they're over there. And there's that strip there, right? There's yeah. different things in that strip. So That Kalamazoo Kitty is in that strip. They have really nice stuff. Where? Uh, where that Steinmart used to be. Oh, in that oh, in that it's building like in, the, in there? In the corner, yeah. Oh. Okay. I wondered what that was. I didn't know what that was. Yeah. Okay. It's like a um anyway, go in there. They have a lot of like home decor and like Oh yeah. So I looked in the window and the light was on when I drove past, but I didn't know what it was. So okay, cool. Well, I'm gonna check that out. So um I've been watching this girl on um social media. Um her social media handle on Instagram is called Thrift and Tell. Okay. And it's, um, she thrift stores all of her everything and she turns them into these fucking fabulous outfits. Like they are clothes. Yes. Okay. They are amazing. Like it's, it's, so now she's based out of Atlanta, er, the greater Atlanta area. So their, um, Goodwills look a lot different than ours. I'm Sure. sure. In terms of what they get. However, her ability to style an outfit with pieces from a thrift store and put different prints and colors together that you wouldn't necessarily think of is bananas. And don't get me wrong. She's absolutely beautiful. Of course, she's beautiful. She's gorgeous anyways. But she's been putting these outfits together. And I found myself, I found, it was one of the reason why I stumbled upon her. It was like one of the reels that came up and something. Oh, watching, yeah. Right? That's yeah. How I found her. And, um, I got like mesmerized. So I went to her page and I just kept watching it over and over again, like all these different outfits. And I was like, Oh my God. And you know, she's showing the price tag. So she's putting together a whole slew of outfits for next to nothing. And I'm like, I don't know. That's, that's fun. Like maybe I can learn how to do that on any sort of scale and save myself some money. So that clothes mentor store is over there. Oh Yeah. And it's not like Goodwill. So a clothes mentor is a little bit different. It's like secondhand thrifting, right? So it's like, yeah. or, you know what I'm saying? It's like, um, it's not a Goodwill, but it's it's what they consider would be a little bit more upscale, I think. But It's consignment, yeah. Consignment, yeah. Con- that's the word I was looking for. Thank you. I got you. Yeah. And so um, I've been in there before and I found a couple of things in there. I don't go in there often because I'm not usually over there. But um, I was like, well, I got an hour and 45 minutes. I'm going to go in there and peruse because you got to have patience and time to do something. Yeah, it's like like shopping at like a TJ Maxx. Right. And so um, only even worse, you know, like (laughs) or better, however (laughs) however you choose to look at it, depending on your mood. And um, I was in the mood. So I went in there and I like found the dopest outfit but i couldn't make the pants work because they were too small um Hmm. which was crazy they were like i thought they would work and they were in the size that i thought i needed and evidently i needed to go up a size but they were like looser um like trouser pants almost but anyways i was trying to thrift some i was trying to put together some outfits that i could potentially use for conference oh yeah yeah and so um the, the pants themselves were like black and they had like almost like a, it's between like a mustard and a bright yellow. So it oh, was in yeah. between that color and though, and it had that color and then it had like bright, like Royal blue, like Royal, Royal blue in a small pattern. And she's really good at mixing patterns and colors and different things. Right. And so, um, and then some of the colors that she puts together, I wouldn't have innately thought of by myself. But when you see them together, you're like, oh, my God, that works. That's dope. Mm-hmm. And it makes it feel like, you know, like high end. Right. So um, I found that. So I found like a blazer and it's suede, oh. which is which is old. It's that's kind of old school, but it's coming back. And so yeah. it's the suede blazer. And then I had those pants and then I had like this kind of loose flowing, just black V-neck blouse that I found. And the, the outfit would have been, and royal blue heels, which I wouldn't have worn the heels to conference. I would have just worn black flats, but I would have gotten the heels for 
to have the outfit, but the, the pants didn't fit. However, I still got that jacket. I got that blouse. I put the heels back. Um, and then the, that color would look great with like a bright pink. Like a, I've seen her match that color with like a bright pink before. That royal blue? No, the yellow. Oh, okay. The yellow. Um, or even the royal blue still would have looked fine with that, like if you were going to do. So I, you know, didn't get the pants, but I'm like, this outfit would be great with just some dark denim, right? Some dark denim, skinny dark denims and a bright colored pump or something. And so the outfit itself, you know, came together. And then I ended up getting, um, I found a jacket very similar to the one I just showed you, only in like a, a gray and like a slate oh. gray really close to that. And I got both of those jackets for like 11 bucks a piece. Nice. And the shirt was like $6 or something, you know, and then I got a pair of flats, some cute, like dressy flats for conference that were like eight bucks. I spent nice. like 30 some dollars and got two nice jackets and whatever. So I got like inspired by that. And I'm like, man, um, I want to go check out like some, there's like what two goodwills here, but the key is like, you have to almost go to like a bigger city. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Where they're going to see some really cool... Um, Georgia's really good at that. Georgia's really good at that. Yeah. Georgia is able to style a really dope outfit with consignment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it perfectly fits mm -hmm. Georgia and her mm -hmm. style and her... like, And I love her for that. I love that she mm -hmm. can do that and get out there and like... I think, I think that that's the... I know we did that like style and fashion episode of a mm. few episodes ago, but I think like now that we're sitting here talking through this, I think that's the biggest difference is like, I have a style, but I don't know that I could tell you what it is. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't think I fully know what my style is. So it's hard to do that, like mix and match and stuff if you don't know what your style is. And I think right. Georgia knows that woman mm. on instagram no. so in, in this woman the thing that i liked about her is my what i would envision as my own style and things that i like align well with the oh. things she puts together okay you know, so that's why i was like oh if i could take some of her tips and what I've, i trust me i started watching the videos and i was like there's a lot of really cool stuff in here like pieces and so i saw it i envisioned i was able to put the pieces together and the outfit would have been dope but the pants didn't fit yeah. But I was able, but it was something that I hadn't necessarily done for myself. I can see it. I know I like it, but I hadn't tried it myself. And so like the reason why I like her account and there are some things, cause she's got a really, she's got a great figure. She's in good shape. She's, she's probably in her twenties. She's probably in her late twenties or something. So she's in, you know, she's body's nice. She can be a little bit more risque with some of her stuff. So she'll take like, she'll take like, men's pants and like, or I'm sorry, men's shirts and, or anything that's collared and she'll like tuck them and roll them. Mm, and mm -hmm. so she'll get rid of the collar and it will be like a V neck or whatever. And a lot of yeah. times she's, you know, it's a more of a deep cut showing her cleavage or she'll take like some of these old granny sets and twist them and roll them. Her ability to manipulate a piece of garment and just by tying something up is bananas. So that type of stuff, probably not where I would be. Sure. But like she put together this amazing outfit with those, you know, those old hip hop sweaters from like the nineties. She took one of those and styled that with this um, amazing like knit skirt that was a long skirt, but it had buttons down mm. it. And so she opened the buttons at the bottom or whatever and had it kind of open. So her legs were showing and the right heels and she had it tucked and it was, um, <laughs> the outfit was dope. And I was like, I would wear that. I would absolutely wear that. There's so many things that she styled that I saw. And I was like, I would wear that. I would wear that. I would wear that. And like, she does a lot of, she'll do, cause she's more risque here, but she'll do more um, covered up pieces mm. for women mm -hmm. who ask. And even the ones that she styles that are more conservative are beautifully done. Yeah. I have to send it to you. It's it's awesome. So anyways, yeah. her thrift and thrift and tell. Okay. T-H-R-I-F-T N, I think it's just N, tell, um, is her handle on Instagram. And I can't remember, I think it's Aisha the Great on on, um, on Facebook, but she she's dope. She's dope. Okay. And it got me excited because I'm like, that would be a fun girls day to go to. Oh, yeah. That would be a really fun girls day. Yeah. I think, speaking of girls day, like, 
I think that that should just be something we try to do. And I know we used to do it on Thursdays, right? Which is why we released the podcast on Thursday. But our kids are older now. It's not realistic to do things on Thursdays, right? Yeah. Thursdays are tough. But I had so much fun on Saturday. And I feel like. We need to put something standing in. Yeah. We need to try to do more of that. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. And I know that shit's busy and I know that we all have our own lives and I know that our kids are in 47 different sports and extracurricular activities, but, um, there's something to be said for being able to like, it's part of that self care. That's part of that doing something for yourself, like Mm -hmm. dropping the kids and going, I, Mm -hmm. you know, agreed enough during the week. Agreed. (laughs) Agreed. It was nice to, it was nice to get away and not have to worry about it. You know, thanks to John for um, being willing to to take the charge on that for the kids. But it was, it was great to be able to go. When it was, the, when's the last time we went shopping together? We got to go walk around that boutique and we were trying, I was trying on hats and we were looking at everything <laughs> and like, it was, it was nice. It was nice not to have to think about anything. And like, you're right. I think it's a, it's an important form of self care that, you know, just because, our lives are busy. We've, you know, let go of that a little bit, but if it's something that we can, you know, plan ahead and get on the books with everybody, you know, then, or, you know, whoever that might be, whatever that looks like, whatever group that is, maybe some weeks we can, and some weeks we can't, or, you know, some months, some can, and some can, or whatever that looks like, but attempt to do it. The weekdays are tough. Yeah. I can't, I, I personally, like, I can't do weekdays anymore. Yeah. They're hard. I can't, I just can't just cause I mean, like when I say I can't like outside of my standing, you know, obligation to us, in addition to that, yeah, I can't. I, yeah. I can't. like not like a group thing. Like, I, 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 yeah, I, I can every once in a while, um, mm-hmm. like I can swing that and make that work, but it would be hard to go back and try and do that every week. Like we used to do. Yeah. Yeah, that would be tough. And, and, and like a weekly thing, a weekly thing isn't really realistic either. You know, like in addition to this, a yeah. Thing. So it's like if it's if we can make it work like once a month, I think that's sure. more. You know, that's more realistic than uh. Yeah, and it's more attainable, right? Like it's just yeah. I think it's it's and then maybe we can and then maybe we can plan. You know, even if it's not a good, but when it when you do it like that, if we plan it ahead of time, we could plan like an activity. So whether it's a. Whether it is a, a we do a thrifting day and some dinner, or we do a wine and canvas, or we do a something, you know, or yeah. X golf or whatever it is, yeah. whatever that looks like, you know, we could plan an activity instead of just getting together all the time, or a game night, or whatever that yeah. looks like. I know. I was thinking about like I'm already thinking about the next one, and that in that strip mall where you went to that clothes mentor, right? Mm-hmm. That Kalamazoo Kitty is in there. There's that sushi restaurant in there that has drinks. Oh, Wild like, Ginger. Yep. Oh yeah. Like we just, that could be the strip mall of the day. Right. And we just go there and we like shop at Kalamazoo Kitty and close mentor. And then we go have fried rice and a cocktail. Yeah. They have a new, um, I saw this today too. They have a new, um, Latin restaurant opening up downtown (gasps) Kalamazoo. I saw that that where Fandango used to be. Yeah. Oh, is that where it is? I didn't know where it was, but it looks dope. Yeah. I know. I want to go. Yeah, it looks dope. I don't know what a lot of the stuff is because that's just my ignorance to Latin food. But um, and even their drink menu, I was like, I don't know what half that is, but you know, I'm all in to try anything. Yeah, it looks real good. I saw that the other day, and I told John, I was like, Ooh, we gotta go. Mm-hmm. Speaking of, I saw today that um, this weekend's the last weekend for Rhinos. They're closing. For real? Mm-hmm. Why? I don't know. I, I didn't wonder. read the article. I just saw it and I got I mad bet and. Not- doing <laughs> i saw and got mad and moved on because i was upset <laughs> i know it is kind of sucky because that's like the stop before i hit that used to be my stop before i'd hit bittersweet which i want to do that like i want to go snowboarding soon too i know you don't but i do you could um, go on saturday yeah but i'm probably gonna be in and out on saturday after the party's over because i gotta I put in all this work dude. like i just got a basketball game at 120 so, so yeah we're all gonna be on the fly yeah. Man. Man. I told you I'd try snowboarding. I'll try. I'll try it again. I'll just keep the, the try going. Who tried to teach you? My brother. Well, it wasn't me. <laughs> no, it wasn't you. 
My brother did. Um, I think I taught Wheeze. Mm, that doesn't surprise me. Mm-hmm. Georgia has been trying to get me, like, every time Georgia talks about it, too. She's like, I'll teach you. Georgia oh, taught Georgia's me how to so play. patient. Georgia taught me how to play golf. She did? Yep. Her and Zariah. T- yeah, her and Zariah took me out. Wow. Yeah. Didn't know that. Yeah, she's Thought pretty you great. you knew how to play. I mean, I, I knew the basics, but. No, I know, but. Not you, like the. You just caught on very quickly and got yeah. good as fuck and then got better than everybody. <laughs> That's how I was with snowboarding, though. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody has their thing. Everybody has their thing. And that's okay. Yeah. It's not mine. Snowboarding is not mine. It but I'm not opposed to trying. I am very excited. If there's snow out, I do want to go. And I want to go, like, in the next, I, before, probably before January ends. So I do we need to pick a day and go. And Well, you're running out of time. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm running out of time quickly. There's a... Um, which I don't know if you'll be able to go, but um, my mom was thinking about, there's this, um, do you know the group ABBA? Yeah. Like, Mama Mia, mm-hmm. here I go again. There's a cover band coming to the State Theater on the 29th. Oh, nice. And um, my mom wants to go. Oh, yeah. And her and Mary were talking about maybe coming out. And I was like, oh, well, that I would go with them. But uh-huh. um, I mean, we might be able to swing it. It'd be fun. We'll see. We'll see. If they I go, I'll get four tickets. And if you can come, you can come. And if you can, I'll find someone else. But can't even predict anything from day to day right now. It'd be a fun. It would be a fun evening out. You know, Mom and Mary are fun at concerts. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. They were a blast at Phil. Man, weren't they? We're, um, we're... Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was gonna say we're, we were the we were the youngest people in the building by twenty years, but still. Top three. God, it was such a good concert. Yeah, it was. Um, so I saw today, aside from Rhino's closing, um, I saw this. So our, our new like workout session started our next like six weeks. Um, man, I love Jess, but she's fucking bringing it this this six weeks. I've only been doing it for three days now, and I'm I hurt. Good for you. I hurt. It hurts. Everything hurts. My ass hurts. My thighs hurt. Um, we did back and shoulders yesterday, and I'm I'm dying today. Good. I'm that dying. means it's working. It feels good, but I'm dying. Right. Um, but I think because you know, Big Brother's listening, right? And like when you look up one thing on the internet, it's all over every internet and social media site you go to. Uh So I've somehow stumbled my way on to um, like the workout side of TikTok where it's like people who lift weights or, Mm -hmm. you know, what they eat in a day or Mm -hmm. shit like that. And I stumbled upon this one girl today who I think is like a, like a, a body, not a bodybuilder, but like, She's a gym rat, right? She's in the gym all the time. And I think she's a coach. And mm-hmm. um, she said, I, I saw a challenge where people are eating on their cheat days, 10,000 calories in a day on their one cheat day a week. And she was like, so I'm going to do it. And so I watched her do this. And I was like, oh, my God. Sick to your stomach. So much food. She got four venti so the tall um the largest ones from starbucks venti mocha frappuccino cookie crumble things and she Mm -hmm. drank those throughout the day so she had one with each meal and then she had like the big steak omelet and a short stack of pancakes from ihop for breakfast and then she had two kfc chicken sandwiches a regular fry and a pop from K from KFC for lunch. And then she had 40 McDonald's nuggets and a large fry. Oh, and gosh, then, no. and then she had a burger and French fries and a piece of chocolate cake from Buffalo wild wings and all of those like venti frappuccinos. And I was like, she's not a big girl. She's, I mean, she is a, a, a wonderful body, but like, where I'm disgusted. You, where did you put all of that? Mm-hmm. How did you not throw that up? 
she probably felt like straight trash the next what day. What happened? Well, and so then she did like a after I'm done. This is like she showed her stomach and what it looked like. And it was very bloated. And she was like, I feel pretty bloated, but I don't feel awful. She was like, I felt terrible after I ate the KFC. She's like, but then I just she's like, I felt OK. And I was like, I don't know how. No, no, I want to throw up just looking at what you just ate. I will Not tell you because no. of the content of it, but the amount. Right. And I like even the even the same kind of repetitive trash ass food back to back. Like when we drove down to Atlanta and back, we got a lot of fast food because we're trying to make a, a turnaround trip. And I was like, I said out loud, I said, I cannot eat another French fry. I'm going to fucking throw up. Like I felt like trash and you know, I'm not, I'm not on a clean diet all the time. Like, but I eat fairly healthy, but like, Ooh boy, I, I felt horrible. I felt terrible. Yeah. Like I felt gross. My stomach hurt. I couldn't wait to put something green in my body. Like, and I wonder I if just... it's like a, probably because she eats really clean all week. Right. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. And, and, she's probably active six days a week with lifting weights. And so you're naturally like, even I find myself hungrier throughout yeah. the day. Yeah. And so like there's, yeah. there's pieces of that, but I just was like, I don't know if I ever want to get to the point in this like journey that I'm on where I'm just like, okay, eating 10,000 calories a day. And I just feel slightly bloated. Right. Like <laughs> I don't think I ever want to feel that way. It was no, very strange. I don't ever want to attempt to eat 10,000 calories a day. I'll tell you what. I've been doing pretty good this week. We've been doing pretty good trying to keep on track for the most part. Um, I bought these. Well, okay. I should say for the most part. When did I make that meal? That was Sunday. I made like pierogies and smoked sausage. I thought you did that. You told me about. Didn't you tell us about that on saturday oh did i do that friday then maybe i did that friday yeah okay yeah maybe okay um no i swear i did that unless you did it again no i did i didn't put the smoked sausage with it the first time i didn't have the smoked sausage the first time i, um, I got pierogies again and i did do a smoked sausage this next time and it was fucking fire which i'm glad i went and got the smoked sausage because it definitely made it better um but um i got these Chicken cordon blues from Aldi. I'm back to Aldi. I'll never, yeah. I'll never cheat on them again. Sorry, <laughs> Aldi. You are not an um, inconvenience. You are worth every minute of extra driving. So um, instead of going across to this expensive ass store over here. So um, I got these frozen chicken cordon blues and they're like little breasts and they're only five ounces. So they're the perfect size. Yeah. And they're stuffed with cheese and ham. Pretty traditional. But boy, were they good. Yeah. I, I made them last night. They were good. Like yum. they were tender. The cheese was delicious. It was melty all over the place. And was seasoned. It was pre-seasoned, but I seasoned it again. But it was good. It was really good. That sounds good. I, we need to go back to Aldi too. Yeah. I But, you know, we don't, I mean, we spend a lot of money at the grocery store, but not as much as we used to since we started doing those emails because our grocery list is done for us, right? Like yeah. the meals we pick out and it's done and we don't usually get anything extra. Um, John likes to take like these, um, those chopped salad mixes. He takes those for lunch every day because they're, mm. they're easy to eat on the road. Right. Those are um, good. And he doesn't have to make anything. He Throws literally it. takes a Tupperware and puts yeah. that in the bag and takes it with him. Right. Um, but I, um, I would like to go back to Aldi. I think I just, but I, it's always so busy. The one out here by me is so fucking busy. We go Sunday mornings, evidently early when nobody else is there. Yeah. Like right when they open. That's what I did. It's probably yeah, good and they were, and they were stocking when I got there. Oh, really? So thing was damn near full. Nice. That's the other problem is like I'd be going to Myers and be wiped. Yeah, it's well, awful. That yeah, everything's still supply chain, I think, is still an issue, you know. Ugh. So stupid. COVID ruins everything. Dude, I'm fucking over COVID. I'm, I'm <laughs> over it. It's trashing everybody's life. I'm over it. I, I can't believe we're still talking about this 52 episodes later. I know. 
53 episodes later, like still, that's why we started this thing in the first place was to survive. And here we are barely hanging on. About to do it again. About to go through it again, even worse. It's like, what the fuck, bro? Yeah. Over Mm. it. Yeah. Over it. Yep. Yep. I don't like it. Uh, What else is on your plate? What else is on your mind? Work. (laughs) Yeah, me too. I know yours is, you're busy too, but Mm -mm. this is not a, um, it's not a pleasant time of year. No, it's not. And like, so I know yours is conference, right? And you're trying to plan a virtual and an in-person and a, questions in a different city and regulations and mandates and it's It's a nightmare it's fucking wild and we've got um in the finance world we're doing we had to close december for a normal month end and then we have to close the year um but then it also rolls into audit which is in two weeks which when you're auditing a multi-million dollar company there's a lot to do Mm-hmm. Um, we also just integrated the company we just acquired, so that's been a dumpster fire and shit has hit the fan and nothing is flowing through the right way and we're missing payments because those didn't get pulled through and trying to figure out how to track all of it onto a balance sheet and it's just is a mess. It's just a... Yeah, I I was thrown back into the accounting world briefly this week just with questions, and I was like, don't want to. No, thanks. <laughs> nope, not for me. I ain't, nope, 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 nope. This ain't my job no more. No, I'm not gonna. Please contact the accounting coordinator. Thank you so much. Well, it's not me at your company, but it's a it's a mess in the finance world. The January, problem is, is February. that... I have to still, I'm still tied into the finance a little bit because I still have to do invoicing for certain things within my programs. So I'm still tied to accounting. So when things get like fudged up or something, a lot of times they come directly to me with the questions, which I understand that, but it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about this. (laughs) And I definitely don't want to do any extra. No, dude, I can't. I can't. I ain't got the time or the capacity. My brain is hurting, literally. And that's how I feel at the end of the day. I think just this time of year, I am so t- mentally drained. And it's like, it's not a physical job. Not right now. When I get to Denver, it is. But it's not a physical job. But I sit behind a computer screen. All day, every day. hours, And I can't get away. And my phone is ringing off the hook. And right now with COVID... There's so many unknowns and people are very uneasy and they're not sure. And they're asking me and I can't give them answers to certain things, you know, because I don't know what Denver's going to do on the, by the 28th of February. Right. I know that they have things in place till February 3rd and that those things can be changed and be lifted by then, or they can be extended, which is most likely what's going to happen because yeah. of the surge and what's happening here. And so, a lot of the things are under control and we have people who are pissed off because they have to wear masks. And then we have people who are weary to come because it's going to be a shit show, you know, in their mind. So it's just, um, and then all of the things that I need from everybody, they're like, our business is overrun with COVID right now. We need an extension. Our business is overrun with COVID right now. We need an extension or, Oh, this is the shipping time on this is way, way longer. So we can't get this anymore. So now we have to figure out something else. And I'm like, it's a lot. It's a lot. And and the 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 trickle down that happens because of COVID is I wish more people could see and understand that. Yeah. There's a lot of people out there that don't believe it's as severe as it is, but it really is. And and when I say severe, one, if you think about the death toll that has happened with this, it's it is higher than anything that we've ever experienced in our lifetime, you know, it's a true pandemic, um, not just within this country worldwide. So the death toll is ridiculous. And yes, the new variant seems to be milder symptoms and less severe if you're vaccinated, which hence that's the point of a vaccination. However, which I go get boosted on Friday, by the way. Oh, good. However, um, you know, 
it, it there are so many more, just like you said, like the trickle down effect. There are so many more impacting factors from it, you know, from how businesses run to how children go to school, you know, daycares can't stay open. It's just, it's, it's one thing after another. And, you know, you can't see your family members and you can't do your job because you have to be a teacher and a mom and a employee all at the same time. It's just, it's insane. It's insane. It's just the amount of stress that I feel like the average human being carries right now is yeah. more than anybody should have to. And I'm not saying that from like a weak standpoint, like I, Life ain't easy. I get it. I'm not saying that, but God damn, it just feels like it's like it's just one blow after another sometimes right now. Yeah, it's a lot and it's messy and I um, I don't want to do it anymore. No, I'm, I, just, I'm tired. Of, I, I hate seeing all the people that I know that are like, man, COVID. We got COVID. I got COVID. I got, it's just it's crazy. Can't even avoid it right now. Nope. And I, you know, John and I and Oliver outside of school because I can't, again, if nobody at school is wearing it, right? my kid is, a, is I, I love him dearly, but he's a follower, right? And if none of his friends are wearing it, and then he's not going to wear a mask. But no, when we go tough. out anywhere else where I'm back to wearing a mask, I'm back. I just, it's not a, a I, I can't have one more thing on my plate. I can't have one more thing on my conscience. And so. We're just doing what we can from our chairs to to mitigate it because I don't want to. That's all you can do. I don't want to be a teacher. No. There's a reason why I quit the teaching school when I was in college. All right. <laughs> Good Lord. Same. Same. I did, uh, what, two years of the education program. And I said, nah, that's when they said you're going to have, that's when they changed things. And they said you had to go to school all the time, like moving forward, you'd have to continue to go to keep your degree up. And I was like, wait a minute, this used to be like a four year thing. Right. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I have to have continued education. Forget what? It. No, I, no, I'm not wait. doing it. I teach for a living. Isn't that continuous enough? Yeah. I ain't doing it. You know, nope. Uh, nope. No, no. Let me get this communications degree. <laughs> It'll serve me. Well, also. look where you are now. You're doing great. Yeah. Life experiences, you know. You figured it out. Yeah. Life experiences taught me more than anything that I paid for with a degree. Yeah. I'm there with you. Well, I know it was an interesting episode because we were kind of all over the place, but. Uh, That's chaos potpourri for you folks. That's why I did all that. We just don't have any room left on our plate because no. we are full-time employees. We are full-time mothers. We are full-time partners. And, you know, I just am spent. Yeah. And due to the everlasting shit show, we are full-time winos. Because Ugh because chaos is inevitable but that's why there's wine so much wine or vodka what well, if you need a little something strong whatever mix them we don't yeah. care pick yeah. up a bottle find any bottle um thanks for listening love y'all love y'all bye ask me 40